In the 90s, we had a lot of Power Ranger imposters. We had VR troopers, and not the good Vive type of VR, more of the migraine-inducing Virtual Boy type of VR. We had Mystic Knights of Turnano... Turnanog? 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 Imagine Game of Thrones, but with less boobs and more morphin' time. But there's one series that still sticks in my mind. One series that said, hey, you know the Power Rangers formula? The one that all the country's kids have come to love? Let's take it and let's throw it. May outside maybe? And for some reason, I loved it as a kid. Hey, don't you act like that isn't one of the catchiest theme songs you ever heard. Hell, I'd even argue that it sometimes carried the show. Like many Saban series, Big Bad Beetleborgs tells the story of some teenagers, or in this case, small snarky cankelbiters, that receive powers from previously recorded Japanese footage that is slightly worse than the American footage, but not worse enough to actually matter, just exactly worse enough to be noticeable. The show starts with some of that classic, quality 90s banter we all remember. Look, there's Roland. Still working on that magic trick. All right, Roland, you're really getting the hang of that magic stuff. The name's Magic. Call me Magic. Yeah, it's quite the character trait you got there with the uh, magic tricks. I can't wait for that to come up again. It doesn't. It doesn't come up again. You call that a race snake? You took that curve like a sissy. Wait a second. Is that who I think it is? Oh my gosh, the actress that plays Nana is the rapping granny from the first season of America's Got Talent. Hey, Roland, Drew's reading ballet magazine. Hey, Drew, I got a tutu that'll fit you. Oh, man. <laughs> kids, you know, they say the darndest things. Yeah, kids. Yeah, kids. Psst, what, what a bunch of kids. I'm definitely not a kid. I'm obviously way older than all of you. I'm definitely of legal age to be working full time at this comic book store. Let me tell you that. Uh, don't, have, don't ask for my ID. I don't have it with me. It's back at home. But you better not be ratting on Nana. Smooth move, Bratwurst. Just ask her to the dance already and get it over with. Oh, the school dance. I can't wait for that scene to come up. It does not. It does not come up. Anyway, these two rich bully kids come in and talk about how they lasted inside a haunted house longer than the other kids. Okay, just to prove that we're not the wimps, let's all go down to the house and see who can last the longest. What? What? What's the matter? Chicken. Ha, that's a laugh. Uh, all right, you're on. We'll see who the real men are. Catch you later. <laughs> Move yeah, it through right. the Zoid. Pathetic. Are you crazy, man? Do the words ghosts... Monsters and vampires mean anything at all to you? Yeah, man, are you crazy? There's a bunch of spoopy stuff happening over there at the haunted house. Um, I'm not sure if you heard, but there's gooblins, goblins, ghost schools, and grabbers, and I'm not sure if you can tell, but I'm obviously very terrified. So the kids go into the haunted house, and it's, of course, full of monsters. What you see is not always what you get! Huh? Wait, come back here! Ah! Let's see if the coast is cool. Okay, let's go. Wait, what? First of all, why do they even have the suit of armor burp there? No one even reacts to it. Just just trying to throw a burp in there cause because of the 90s. And second, they just use that same exact clip of the girl running down the hall within seconds of each other like no one was gonna notice. Well I did, Saban. I did notice. I know what you're thinking. Hey, that doesn't look like Power Rangers at all! And you'd be right! I'm not even really sure what exactly they were trying to accomplish here with the monsters. And these monsters are in pretty much every episode from here on out. Some of them even get their own episodes. It just didn't... fit together... at all. Often the Beetleborgs would be fighting a villain and it would cut back to some side story with the monsters. Finally, the kids released this phantasm named Flabber. If Beetlejuice and Ace Ventura had a baby, Flabber would be it. 
What's a thousand? <laughs> Don't you kids know anything? A thousand's a super cool being able to work extraordinary feats, dude. For freeing him, Flabber grants the kids one wish. This is a dream. Let's make it a good one. Let's be superheroes. Beetleborgs. Yeah. yeah, let's go for it. Okay, we want. Okay, we want to be Beetleborgs. Whoa, she's cool with the music there, buddy. It's a little intense, don't you think? You didn't even let the kid finish his sentence before you cut the tape. Oh, if you can't tell, they didn't even get their powers until the second episode. They also use the second episode to introduce the villains. Baby, it feels so good to be three-dimensional. Ah. You could say that again. Oh, and you know what would really make the day complete to do some serious three-dimensional damage. Wait a second. I know that voice. Hi, I'm Davis. Hey, at least somebody benefited from the series. Get your sorry carcasses in here. I haven't got all century. Well, you see, first we did some sightseeing, and then we blew up some stuff, and, and then... Get in here now! Summon. Right behind you. Wait for me! <laughs> for being 2D villains gone 3D, they're still pretty one-dimensional. They don't really talk about taking over. They don't really even have a plan. They just want to blow stuff up, and they really don't like the Beetleborgs. That's pretty much it. And that would be fine if the action sequences had any action in them. But minus the Japanese footage that they cut in, the choreography leaves much to be desired. Looks like your pal can't take the heat. But hey, at least they got passes to Comic Con. Oh, they're gonna go. They're gonna go with this kind of. They're gonna go with this. This is what we're going with. Just sticking with it. You got these people in this this powerful armor, and they're just gonna run around like Scooby Doo, huh? That's what we're going with. All right. The Beetleborg vehicles are lame. We only get a handful of giant robot fights toward the end of the series, and the writers spent a little too much time taking their actors' pants off. Ugh. And these camera angles. Yeah, try not to puke back and forth watching this for 10 minutes. By the end of the Big Bad Beetleborgs, I had to ask myself, why? What's the point? It doesn't compete with Power Rangers in any way. There was no real threat. All the buildings that were destroyed were just kind of shrugged off. Yeah, sorry to all those poor people that died in those horrific explosions. The series didn't even have a conclusion, and the bad guys were just kind of left at large. So, why did I like it so much when I was little? Well, maybe it was the silliness. Maybe the series played on the fact that I really did want to be a Power Ranger, and I'd spend my afternoons with my friends pretending to be one. I really did want my bike to turn into a cool Mega Spectre Sector Mega Spectre Sector Mega Spectre Sector Cycle. <clears throat> the Beetleborg bikes. Maybe it was because the suits were actually really awesome, but was it good? Eh, but it was fun. A little weird, and often pretty cringy, but fun. What more could you ask for from a kid's series? Maybe this? Fuck, what are you doing? Yeah. Yeah. 